that is it all. I have a problem with expressing my appreciation. And I also had a problem <laughs> of thanking after I've, I've been given food. It's so much tormented or disturbed us in, our, in my family with the first wife. She used to cook. And I would eat very fast after I would leave. And she would think maybe the food was not good. She needed to change the kind of cooking. But the next day, I would do the same thing. She would change a number of times the way she could cook. But at, after eating, I would not appreciate until she locked up herself not to devise on any other special way of cooking and she would just merely cook. But when we had a, a misunderstanding, which was a real one, you know, times marriage get misunderstandings from anywhere. Then I went into prayer and I asked the Lord, help me, I'm praying for my family, I don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, go back to your wife and listen to what she will tell you. Then I went back, called her, she was in the kitchen. And I called her, mommy, come. When she knew that I had gone to the bedroom, now our, by then our bedroom was a court because we could come up with different crimes, we would quarrel, we would argue, and after it all, we would go and sleep. After around 50 minutes, she came, but her face had changed. She had around three kind of faces, the one for the sitting room, for the bedroom, and the one for the kitchen. But it is only I who could consider the bedroom face. As soon as she got into the bedroom, she began. Now what are you telling me? Begin what you're saying and you will know. This one time I was not going to pick her. For God had told me to give an ear to hearken to what she was to tell me. Then I told her, mom speak, what are the things I do that hurt you? It was the first time she confessed. You do not appreciate after you've eaten. When I got to know that appreciating after eating, the Holy Spirit tapped me and told me, do not refuse any issues, she says, just accept. Have pity upon me, even to now, I'm just still learning. The other thing she told me that I've never ridden her on the bicycle. We used to start Zengebe. Zengebe had two cities. Even whenever she would be pregnant, it is other boys who would ride her and take her to hospital, and she would be very hurt of it. Her point number two was, you've never ridden me on a bicycle. The Holy Spirit told me, do not despise that too. Then I told her, I've accepted. After the meeting, I'm going to ride you. I rode her within the cities and towns of Zengebe twice. By the time we came back, she was very happy and she would just do any work easily. You're laughing at me, but it is not well with you also at your places. Let me leave point number three. Stand up on your feet. 
Stretch yourself for we are going into learning. Funa yoko mtu anyamba ko kitu kitu kisembeze ko ano kato. We golole, we golole. Stretch yourself. Zikiriza nti mukama agenda tua ekisaka ongezi ko lwalero. I believe God is going to give us grace this evening. Nesonga biri. Zetuina okwegendeza bitunabera nga tunatambula no moyo mtukuvu. I've got two issues. We need to take God off in case we are to walk or move with the Holy Spirit. There would have been many, but let me draw only on two. Bible 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 As you're standing up on your feet, open your Bibles, Second Chronicles 29:10. Today's afternoon of the few minutes that I'm going to be using this is your word. Era chiri kumutima guange o kulagani indagano ne mukama katonda wa isirairi. Ekiruiche, echikambu, echichuke, okutuvako. Second Chronicles 29 verse 10. Now I intend to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger will turn away from us. Verse 11 belongs to you. On the 31st, as we are winding up a year that will never be again, and as we prepare ourselves to enter year 2015, of which a few hours to go, verse 11 is your verse. Just look in your Bible, that is where it is found. Verse 10, you will get your own time and get into a covenant with your God. That is verse 10. Verse 10. Kubanga mukama abalonze okuyimiriranga masoge Okote de zanga, era no, era muberenga, abawele zabe. Buliombu atuka, osome nyeriezo, ngatituna kwe yongerayo. Everyone read those verses before we continue. Now I intend to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger will turn away from us. My sons, do not be negligent now, for the Lord has chosen you to stand before him, and to serve him, and to minister before him, and to burn incense. This below of burning incense in our days it no longer exists. Currently, incense would have been prayer together with our habits. Amen. Amen. You could take your seat. Two points I would want us to share with if we are to walk with the Holy Spirit. Point number one. Make a decision in this year 2015 that you're going to walk or you're going to move with the Holy Spirit. If you're to walk with him, of the many points we could consider, pray for yourself that God will immunize you against grumbling. 
If you are to walk with him. Not down grumbling in capital letters. Yuda esule soka. Jude chapter 1. Oru nyiriri. Luwa kuminanya. Verse 14. Erabo yabo girako eno kwa umu samvu. Ukuba kwa adamu. Ngayo gira nti mukama. Tidaba mukama jana batu kububi. Kakumi. Ukuleto umu sangu kubona. Nukusinsu msangu wana avata tia katonda. Nuruwe vikolo avi ya abu biona. Biba kole demu vuta tia katonda. Nuruwe vikambo vya abu biona. Ebi waganyavu. Abu ono nya avata tia katonda. Biba mwogedeko. Katonda gamanzi jana msangu. God is saying I'm coming with. Judgment. Nakulaga, bichebi gendo kubao. And he shows you what will take place. Mwagenda kujio kuleto musangeli avu nabatamutia. That is going to bring judgment over all who do not fear him. Abono nyabakaka nyavu. The sinners that are hardened in heart. Ngabayine bigambe biwaga nyavu. Having vulgar words. Ule kumina umukaga. Verse 16. Abono bebe murugunya. Beba nyiga. Abata mbulo kugoberira okwe gomba kwa ewe kuli. Na kamwa kawe kogere bigambo ebi inga okwe kurumbaza. Ngabasa angamu abantu ekitibwa uruwa magavaga awe. Buliomu watu ka osomo nyolo kuminenya paka kule kumina omukaga. Dobozi deneko na dalanga tumalako mwaka gunu. In a loud voice, Enoch. The seventh from Adam prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of the ungodly acts they have done in their ungodly way. And of all the harsh words and ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Kama kwa sevi gambevi ya beko. Omotima guomwano mmoja abitereka. May God use those words and keep them in one's heart. Wetuna abela ba kutambula no mwe omtu kumuna kuzafe. If we are to walk with the Holy Spirit in our days, let me not speak to all of you. Targeting, targeting My target is of one person. If you are to walk with the Holy Spirit, pray to God that He will immunize you against this spiritual disease. If you will accept and know it is a disease, as long as you admit it is a disease, and you permit him to treat you, he will do it. Jeremiah 3.12 tells us, God declare these words. Jeremiah 3.12 says, Go proclaim this message towards the north. Return faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Onyole kumine satuluga mbabobo komao soka kukiriza. Verse 13 says, as you're turning back, first admit it is you who sinned against the Lord your God. Verse 14 says, so first admit that if you're to walk with the Holy Spirit, there are certain things he will not bear with as long as you're still carrying them. All confess grumbling. 
Dobozi dene okwe murugunya. Grumbling. Bino vye vivi evita wogana ne inga atebi meketo umoyo ne gukala. These are the sins that are not shouting, yet they eat up your spirit to emptiness. Bino vye vivi uke vivi umoyo, evi meketo umoyo guo muntu, okubera anga gumenya we nkula gana ya guo, no umoyo mtu kufu. They are the spiritual viruses that affect your spirit and affect your relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, take hold of the foxes that have eaten the fruits of our vineyard. That is the book of Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15. Okwe murugunya kwa mutawana. Grumbling is very dangerous. Okwe murugunya ye mbozi yo mbiro wozo. Nebo bato yo gira. Ne inga yo mbiro wozo biyobo yo gira. Grumbling is the conversation found within your thoughts. However much you do not speak, but your thoughts are speaking. Okwe murugunya lueru yimba. Orubera mbiro wozo luta kutuka. Grumbling is the song that is found within your thoughts that is endless. Katonda alia. Katonda unyiriza, katonda uomerua. God eats, he smells, and he enjoys. Kati olu imba luombiro wozo luo kwe murugunya, luandiba kawowo, obe chivundu. So that song found within the thoughts, that is of grumbling, would be a sweet aroma or a rotten scent. Senfuma katonda za dilinga nange. God has been dealing with me. Concerning the issue of grumbling and anger. Remember, I was trained at King Boxing. I'm not so much taken over by soccer, but as long as I consider people that are kickboxing, trying to fight, I would really want also to come and be part of them or them to continue. Zaburi chikumi munya, onyirwa makumi ya satu munya. Psalms 104, 34. Zaburi chikumi munya, onyirwa makumi ya satu munya. Psalms 104, verse 34. Mbokuroo za kwange kumuomere nga. May my meditation be pleasing to him. And I will always rejoice in the Lord. If you're filled with grumbling, that conversation that is found within the thoughts, there is no way you can guard your relationship with the Holy Spirit, yet at the same time you're filled with grumbling. I told you that receiving the Holy Spirit is very easy. But guarding your relationship with Him so that you walk with Him, it is trouble or a war. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Receiving the Holy Spirit is very easy. But walking with Him, it is a very long journey. It is a battle. There is no way or we have not any prayer we will pray to quench what stirs up the thoughts. The time I've spent pastoring, I began pastoring in 1989. It is not easy to shepherd the flock. It seems I'm also very hard to my God. Senfuma, according to how I was trained at kickboxing, as long as someone falsely speaks about me, it really torments me when he speaks what I've not said or what I've not done. Senfuma, I've not done. 
I hate it so much simply because my dad used to hit me so much simply because of something I had not done. Wabie. You stole. And I would tell him, I was not present, do not reply me. And he would tell me, a few days down the road, the one who stole is now discovered and you feel so bad, almost telling him, please undo all that you spoke, but he could not do it. So that used to disturb me a lot. All confess grumbling. Grumbling within the thoughts. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. It shows you how God can kill and strangle the chosen ones in the desert. What he did to those he first chose. Bible. The Bible says. They used to grumble. These are the sins that are not shouting but very dangerous. God is calling upon Stephen Semfuman. If I'm to walk with the Holy Spirit in these our days, I need to first admit the mistakes or this weakness of grumbling. And not even to speak or give an excuse of it. I may admit it is sin and it does not guard my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Raise up your hands as you say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Help me as concerns this. I want you to have room in me. Immunize me against grumbling. Immunize my thoughts. In Jesus' name. The scriptures have said that God smells over the thoughts. A question. If we go and visit the rotten there are those with sweet aromas and there are those with very bad scents. Is it true? Is it true, my son? Would you would you love to remain smelling over those with sweet aromas? How about those that have a bad scent? Through your thoughts, through the thoughts, we can either give a good scent or a bad scent. What I'm going to tell you, Simalaga Chogera. I do not merely speak it. I was a married person just as you also know. All of you know about that. In that my first marriage it had something. That stared me a lot. One of which Chali Chamu Kiriza Gwenaita Nengavana Nayomu Gugu Nganjagara to Kolenga Nayen Kungana Ezabana Bawala. It was of a certain believer who I called upon and I shared with a certain burden of going, making conferences to meet girls. But by then I used to hold very many conferences for girls. Then I loved to raise up a team that we will work with. 
Ne muita ne mofisi ya ne muga njaga lovere kutimu jetuge ndo kola nalio. Okuyamba kukubana abawala. Abata kulide makaga abaza dekani seba fukira maka. Then I called this person to my office, shared with this person that I want you to be of the team that is going to share with young girls that have not grown up with their parents. The church is present to do such. Then I shared with this person all the necessities or all that is required to share with a given young girl that would have been shared by a parent. She was a married person and I trusted her. She had turned my marriage or my family upside down. As soon as we finished sharing, she boarded a taxi and went home. And she arrived home, began tapping her lap. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Mom, mom, mom. Pastor yenyini ya mpise na antuma. It is pastor himself who has called me and sent me. Ori mujama. You're too dirty. Just as I shared all with her. All we have to take to the young girl. She diverted only a little. It is himself who has sent me. And she spoke out everything that we had shared. You do not have good discipline. You do not grow with your parents. It is himself who has sent me because I've been in his office. It was true. My wife had not grown with her mother. Ha! After she had spoken all, he has sent me. It is him who called upon me and told me, truly speaking, he has sent me. Now by the time I returned home, the woman was just like a balloon. She served the food and placed it on the table. As I was eating, but she would be breathing. She would be breathing hard. And I, and I was wondering, what did I do? I left home and nothing was wrong. We left the sitting room. We got into the bedroom. Remember what I told you about our bedroom? Now when we got into the bedroom She just knelt down and began crying She burst into tears And I wondered what did I do She wept a lot But I could go revisit the entire day How was yesterday And I considered nothing wrong I had done Whenever someone is crying, I do not be in a hesit to reach out to that person. I've also wept a lot. I first leave you to wrestle with your God. She wept a lot. She wept until she began confessing. But you man, what did I do to you? Why is it that you don't speak to me over all that I do? Why do you send me someone? Then I asked her, whom did I send? I was very sure I hadn't sent anyone. Now why are you refusing? And I would ask her, who is that person? Don't you understand him or her? My thoughts were stricken.
After I had clung and persisted over her, who is that, who is that? Then later she told me, isn't it you who sent so and so to tell me this and that? I'm shabby, I'm this, then I wondered. <laughs> A question, had I spoken Monyambeko, that? Nabiogede. Had I spoken all those? Namutumie. Did I send her? Now that was the source of the problem. Just changing or diverting a little. Our family or home shook. I tried to explain about myself. But nothing would stand. But nothing would stand. I felt like all I would give as an excuse I had run up with Then I also burst into a loud shout, Oh, Jesus! Because I had no any other word I could use. I could use. I began calling on Jesus, 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 how do I go through such a state? She wept as I would weep. She was true and I was also true. She was told it is true. Is it that all that she was told is right? Yes, it is. But the source of the problem was she could not trust what I was telling her and she was right because she had been told. The fact that she had been filled and she asked me, didn't you call the other lady, Mrs. So-and-so? And I accepted it. It is true. I called her. Then she said, now why have you been rejected? She could not wait for the next response. I wept. Uh, feeling like I was really perishing or being done away with. I mounted to a level of knowing that truly no word would come up and speak for me that would be clear. But I just told Jesus, you know my heart. Then a wave of sorrow came my way. I wept. Within the course of such great weeping, very cold wind, where a voice that would quench the tears came from. It is only that which saved me. Stephen. Stephen. I know your heart. I even know your motives. I know what you spoke. Guma. Take heart. I examine the heart. They seemed like usual words. But I felt like they came with water to quench the fire that was burning me up. That is what gave me rest in such a hard situation. There is somewhere you mount whereby you have no any word you could use to explain for someone to understand you. Whereby you need a comforter to come and speak to you with the last word that will comfort your heart. The heavens being a witness who was there as my wife by then began getting stumbled over every other thing. Mrs. Nyanzi is a witness over it. Even many other believers after the one who was my wife by then had opened up to ill thinking about every person. I do not know why I'm speaking this, yet I do not merely speak them. One believer brought us a gift. 
Sere bia tuwaina Tuwaina chisenge na dido Mchisenge tedi yo chitanda Mdido tewali wontebe Lumu zali bili Ngatukuwa mkeka notula kumukeka Botula kumukeka Botula botula ngina na ibili mchisenge Kupati wali yo chitu by then, we had only two rooms, the bedroom and the sitting room. We did not have either a bed or chairs. As long as you would come to visit us, we would give you a mat and you would sit down. But you could see what is taking place in the bedroom. Now one believer is now touched. And he looks around. The bedroom is empty and he inquires, where does my pastor sleep? He had a lot of money. That lady had money. And she decided to buy us a bed. Then a vehicle brought this bed. Remember who was the wife by then. Her thoughts had been too much stricken. As the devil confronts your relationship with God, he first throws on a wrong seed in your thoughts. As the car was reversing, having brought the bed, now this believer, by the time she brought the bed, two days back we had done our best to buy a bed. These are the words that she asked him. Madam, who told you to buy, us a, to buy us a bed? I felt I was dying wherever I was. We do not need a bed. Where will we place it? Then I try to step over her with my feet. Like trying to tell her they do not speak out that when someone is giving you a gift. And she loudly spoke, do not step over me. It is you who told us that we may speak all truth. Truth remains true. Friends, you cannot understand what I went through. My thoughts were stricken once again. Do you understand if you wanted to tap someone to reduce or stop the conversation and she speaks it out openly? Do not step over me. It is you who told us truth remains truth. Now this believer who has come with the car, she needed someone to help her in removing off the bed. Now this one is asking her, who told you? I almost burst. That happened. Mrs. Nyanzi, where are you? Come here. <laughs> They asked her a lot of what she had brought. The other brought us bed sheets, others the bed covers, and then she would ask, Who told you the bed covers? I'm talking about things that torment your thoughts. What did you bring? Praise the Lord, listeners. <laughs> they had given birth to a child. <laughs> then I came along with children for uh, dresses for the children, for the, the child. The baby blanket. Together with the baby blanket. <laughs> and I was told to go back with them. I had very many cases of the like. <laughs> Every other day that would come, my thoughts would be stricken. I would try to gather up myself. And a believer would come. Then she would look at him. Who told you that is what we want? Are you still around? All these I'm sharing. I've never shared this in any conference. Who was the wife by then? Was captivated in her thoughts whereby she could not be scared of anything. Who are those we went with 
Twagende Rwanda. Ne muita jabuze kubantu. We went to Rwanda. I called upon her to come and say hello to people. Na kubanze migo. And she and she caned me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm the pastor's wife. You just see them preaching, but they do not have any faith. For two hours she spoke. Remember, I had called her to come and say hello to the audience. And she would speak while getting far. I'm standing just behind her. And she would talk while drawing Some people talk about God that is, can do everything. But in case someone is sick, they easily go to hospitals. They do not have faith. For two hours. I felt like I was dying. People began holding their luggages, moving out to go. We've ever lost a child. This child fell sick of two weeks, within a period of two weeks. She could not believe in going to the hospital. She would bring a cloth and pass over this child as she would speak in tongues. And now this child totally fell sick. The muscles came out. By the time they took the child to the hospital, she just passed away. My heart was stricken once again. I do not know why I'm sharing this. It is very easy to receive this. But walking or moving with him having challenges along. Wow. We mounted to a level. She would strike the doctors and nurses. Those are sons of men. It is only God who can do everything. Now, whenever I would have any child who is sick, I would just get the car, drive very fast, go to hospital without her knowledge, lest what happened before would come back. Now, she would gather all information and come strike or hit me. One time there is something that happened. She conceived and she fell sick. She refused to go to hospital. And then this child that had been conceived died within. And the child began rotting from within. As she was sweeping, she felt like something had come out. Now the different parts of the baby had begun to come out. And then she saw it with her eyes, but still didn't go to hospital. Have pity over me. I do not know why I'm sharing this. I prepared very different issues. There is a certain child who fell sick. I think I was in UK. We could communicate over phone and she would tell me there is something that came out of me. Have you gone to hospital? Is your faith in doctors? Then I kept quiet. Then God used on another child through getting sick. Then I called Elder Musoke. 
Uchijukira bulunji. You recall that very well. Muchara alibati nebati nebati. The woman is like this, like this, and this. Yeke njini ya inebi nitu kativi muvamu. There are things that are coming out of her. Nye mudusomu wana mudwali yo mkola gani na haba sawo. Haba sawo mudwali yo ba. Badiringa na iba mkwati yo ba mkebele. But now you work with the doctors in the hospital. You take very fast the chair to hospital. Then let them work out very fast and they may examine her. Muchi aliyo. Are you still around? Musoke chitu fecho vaneda. Is it true? Katuina haba sawo jeni alua. We have Jane doctors. Jane Wanyama. Okay. Yomu kubari murukwe. Okuru kako na kitingeva doctor. Bata andikira kumana. Bata mboza yegwe mami oriotia. Obla mbubu libuta. Awa bagamira. Nama denje la era. Nama vera we chintu. E e e. E chintu. Katu kebele kutulani. Bintu ya kusala asala magizi. She's Dr. Wanyama, she's one of the people who were trying to, one of the doctors who were trying to devise means of how they can help her. And after she freely spoke, I was sweeping and something happened. Should we take you to the scan? Now by the time they checked her, examined her, this child had died from within. And then she was told, we are going to admit you. If it fails, we will operate you. And she said, operating me, me I cannot be operated, it is him. We were communicating using phones very fast every other point. They gave her all the medicine that would release the remaining part, but it is. And they say the only part we can do is to operate her, but she refused operation. Are you still around? I'm talking about things that can stir up and torment your thoughts. Yet thoughts are a very important issue. Anyway. She refused the operation. And they called on the principal of the hospital, Mengo Hospital, to speak to her. And she told him, do you know what? As for me, I cannot be operated. Whether you're bidding farewell to me, do so. My God will prove himself. Friends, I almost burst once again. Mbankaba, mkaba, mkaba. As I was weeping, weeping, and weeping aloud. Then a voice from my inside spoke. Stephen, I know your heart. It is I who called you. Her days are reduced. I was given seven years. And I was scared. At the end of the seven years, that is when she had her last breath. I was scared. I wept. I wept. I bought the plane, came back. Now they had bid farewell to her from the hospital, but remember the other thing was still inside. The doctors gathered around and would say, please come and see the wife to a pastor. She has refused operation. Then they bid farewell to her. By the time I boarded to be back, I was called back to the hospital. I came to the hospital. I was told everything they had examined and so. Day by day, I would walk through shame. Lunaku, kulunaku, ngantambulida mumaziga. Every other single day, I would move but weeping. Wakati mkukabo. Amid is all those tears. Mugamba, mami. And I told her, mom. Mugamba. What are you telling me? How I wish you would accept what the doctor said. Now where will God be? <laughs> then I would just give up. Then I gave up on her. And she got. How do you call it? Chiga. A scan. Then she got something like a scar. Which is just stunted. It does not grow. It cannot be released out. Yet it's a dead thing. 
Kuzala. She could no longer give birth. The only boy we had by then, he's the one who passed away. Now we remained with only girls. Amidst that time as I was crying. That voice that usually comes when the situation is on fire. Because she had hardened at heart. Only seven years she have in this life of the lady. Salidwako. Her days have been reduced. Hey. I wept once again, oh Lord, no, 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 let that not be. And he was silent. Ever since, was silent. Ever since that voice stopped, it even quit my head. I was scared. Accident. When we had the accident, Immediately, all the things that happened seven years be before came in my thoughts like this. Brethren, the Holy Spirit is so smart. We need to be very careful with him. First, raise up your hands. Garment, I Jesu. Oh Jesus. Dobozi dene, I am my own tukuvu. Oh Holy Spirit. Tase biro wozo biyange. Save and rescue my thoughts. Tase biro wozo biyange. Rescue my thoughts. Njagalo kutambula nawe. I want to walk with you. Dobozi dene, njagalo kutambula nawe. I want to walk with you. Na ye biro wozo biyange. My thoughts. With your eyes closed. All these I've spoken or shared are known for all of you. God is saying, I'm going to give you my spirit. Put right your thoughts. I'm going to give you my spirit. I've chosen you. To stand in ministry. But your thoughts. I want to entrust you with the mysteries of the heaven. But the thoughts. Brethren, the heavens is the witness. I do not know why I've shared all this. Maybe they are not for all of you. But there is someone God is calling upon. That there is something he wants to give you. But the thoughts. Many of you, your ministry is in a chaos simply because of wrong thoughts. You are even not sorrowed because they are evil. Thoughts. Remain having your eyes closed, but the issue the is the thoughts. The amazing thing about the thoughts is that things that stir them up are the main. How will you guard them yet one who stirs them up is present? God examines the heart. The inward battles. 
You wrestle with everything. You cannot guard or retain peace and rest of the Holy Spirit. Yet your thoughts are already stirred up. It is impossible. Today there is an open door for you. God is saying, There is something I want to give you. It is true. He's going to give it to you. But He's saying, Immunize yourself concerning the thoughts. God told me, humble yourself. Humble yourself. So that you can nurture people. Those have called you to nurture. Humble yourself. Many are to arise or race before you. They are going to serve me much more than you do. Put right your thoughts towards them. So that you can nurture them. Brethren, the Spirit of God is present. He's saying, plow or slash the field of your thoughts. I loved you, thus says the Lord. I've also just been patient with you. All the wickedness you consider in others, likewise you are. There are many mistakes he has done and he has not spoken them out to others. There are very many mistakes we've made. And he has not spoken or released them out to others. With your eyes closed, God is calling on an individual. You're going to be a father to many. First put right your thoughts. God is calling out someone. You're going to be a man. Long your thoughts. God is sending on the fire that purifies. It is putting right thoughts. The grace is present. God forgives. God forgives. God forgives. Grumbling. Together with the greed of wealth. Are the two things I wanted to touch, but we are going to leave that of wealth. And lay emphasis on grumbling. God is saying to you, I want to entrust you with words right away from my mouth. He spoke to Jeremiah, I placed my word in your mouth. Mm. 
Raise your voice and begin to pour down your heart in repentance. Raise your voice. It is very dangerous if you do not break down over your thoughts. They are some of the things that draw away the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't love those who are moving apart from kneeling down to cry out to your God. Raise up your voice and pray for yourself. Tell God to put right and put right your motives. You are in your time of being used of God. In case you accept to easily break down. When you accept to put right your motives. Likewise your thoughts. You are going to be quickened. Raise up your voice and pray for yourself. Raise up your voice and pray for yourself. It is written in the scriptures. There are many people who reduce their years. There are many people who reduce their years due to their disobedience. Raise up your voice and pray. Put right the battles you have with people. Put right your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Raise up your voice and pray. Masogo, Ola baba na baba tuje bata sobola kulaba Okebere miti maja femu kama Jedu vude tukakana masogo Katuka mba tusasiri Mukama sonyua Sonyua ayo muiza webi itu biona Sonyua nkwe gairi de yesu Miti maja femu Uwo jikebera ikatondo weje Sonyua kulobu talibu tukiri Ta 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 Sonyua kule bilo uzo ya femu kama Sasira <laughs> Moyo mutukufu sonyua Tentegendewe tu yiza kutambula nawe Netuwe mulugunya Mluwebi ya mitu kuatako Nebita tu kuatako Netuwe mulugunya mbuli isonga Na yetu naze Tunaze mukama Naza Yesu naza Yesu naza Kabira mukama kabira Naze vila wazo yake mukama Naza omotima kwange kwe kairide Moyo wa mukama naza Umwaya mtu kufu naza Uwanga sisobola na ye naza Umele kula mutima kwange naza mukama Naza, naza mukama Kwa wane naliza kwe kairide Yesu naza Mukama naza Mukama naza Yere miyabu ya chita kera ya yokera na kamba Mukama ando kula nange na lokoka Nagamu kama mponya nake na wana Na ye mulu talolue vilo wazo Yesu wata tuonya teri agenda kutuonya Mwaya wamu kama wata tuyamba teri agenda tuyamba Mwaya mutu kubu wata tutasa teri agenda tutasa Mwaya wamu kama yamba Mwaya wamu kama yamba Yamba ikatondo wete Yamba umiza webi tuviona Nana kumuli dela yamba Jari lava fumbo ya me kwe kairide Jari lava sajo ya me mukama Jari lava suma mukama Mulimutu kumulitara ya kwe kairide yesu 
Ulio If you were hurt by anyone come out of the tent come come the, the grace is sufficient just fall before the Lord the grace tell God give me strength today I may let go right cry out to the Lord is going to give you that grace whoever feels like crying you're being healed you woman forgive the husband you in your own strength you it is only the spirit who can hope you in that pray and cry out to the Lord cry out to the Lord fall anywhere before the Lord Sawe <laughs> I go to Nagamba, I go to Natagesa, I go to Isoko, Savira Mokirizan, Katana Sonua, yes, Okojako Mokama, Evian Kavigamba, what does Sonu, what does Sonu, Pamania Casanua, Pamania Casanua, Petty Sanchez Sonua, Savetti Sanchez Sonua Mokama, Savetti Sanchez Sonua, yes, Savetti Sanchez Sonua Mokama, what does he move on a case? Ganera Yamba. Mulo <laughs> Awechisa <laughs> I got on the one yamba. Omoya wamo kama nyamba. Omoya moto kwa nyamba. Oh, do ba koko yita kama. 
Mukama jobo kwata. Yes, jobo kwata. Mukama jobo kwata. Gumalam, gama gombe gasami. Gumala, gate wali subi. Kati kowola. O Musa Igwa Yesu Gimani Gafa Gobolo Kozi Kidem Umala Gama Gombe Gansami Umala Gate Wali Sobe Oh, 